It's very interesting to see some of the experiments scientists carried out in order to establish the translocation of proteins to mitochondrial mitochondria. Um, they wanted to check what should be the nature of the protein that is translocated to mitochondria. Is it folded or is it unfolded? So in order to prove that they carried out a very simple experiment. It should be inspiring for all those who watch this video how simple thought pattern and systematic doing of experiments can lead to wonderful results. That's the main purpose of explaining these experiments here. So the goal is, so their hypothesis is, they, I mean, they wanted to check whether the protein should be folded or unfolded before it is being translocated to the mitochondria. So what they have done is they took a protein which is expressed in mitochondria. That is the alcohol dehydrogenase. Alcohol dehydrogenase is expressed in mitochondria which means alcohol dehydrogenase will have a signal meant for the mitochondria. They also took another protein and this protein is a cytosolic protein that is DHFR. DHFR stands for dihydroxy, uh, dihydrofolate reductase, an enzyme that is required for uh, nucleic acid synthesis. So, and this protein will be expressed in the cytoplasm and this will be expressed in the mitochondria. What they have done is transferred the signal to, to DHFR. So this signal is transferred, which means this protein will be now directed to mitochondria. They did an additional step in this. What they have done is they introduced a spacer. So this is a spacer. A spacer is a set of about 50 non-specific amino acid. It has no function. What they wanted to check is to ensure that this protein covers the distance of uh, uh, either outer mitochondrial membrane, either inner membrane space and either inner mitochondrial membrane. That much space must be covered. So they added about 50 amino acid, non-specific amino acid to this. So naturally, we know that when this is added to a system containing mitochondria, okay, system containing mitochondria, this DHFR will get incorporated inside, naturally. They did a variation to this experiment because their goal is whether is it necessary to keep the protein in folded or unfolded form. So what they did was um, they added a chemical. So that chemical is methotrexate. You know that methotrexate is an anti-cancer drug which will which will uh, uh, fold which will fold which will bind to DHFR and make the enzyme uh, in a folded form or it will inhibit the enzyme. Generally speaking, HSP70 that is a heat shock protein is required uh, in the cytoplasm. This is a cytoplasmic. HSP70 is required to maintain uh, the enzyme in an unfolded state. So, uh, what they did is methotrexate is used in order to fold the dihydrofolate reductase enzyme. So, therefore, this dihydrofolate reductase enzyme is folded now because methotrexate is added. Now here is the spacer, here is the spacer and then it has the signal at the end. Now this protein is allowed uh, uh, to migrate in the mitochondria. So therefore what will happen if you consider that this is the, uh, the outer membrane 
okay this is the outer membrane and this is the inner mitochondrial membrane this is the matrix okay so this is a spacer spacer is there and if the signal is inside once the signal is inside if the signal will get cleaved by a protease protease that is a routine practice and then the protein gets folded but now what happens because of methotrexate if the protein is folded and this protein cannot pass through in the two channels in the outer channel and in the inner channel it cannot pass through so this is trapped there so it is to prove whether you need an unfolded protein or a folded protein or can a folded protein pass through mitochondrial membrane this is what they were trying to prove now how to determine how to measure this that is another problem how to determine whether it is existing outside or existing inside look at the in the in the thinking the brilliant idea which they used in order to identify whether the protein is folded and kept outside remaining outside or inside so therefore this space that they have used in order to establish um, an intermediate a stable intermediate so therefore it remains there as a stable intermediate that was the reason a spacer was introduced uh, within the structure so now assume that this is folded now to determine the structure what was done is they created antibodies against this dhfr so antibody is added you know that the antibody will bind to the methotrexate Uh, sorry antibody will bind to the uh, dihydroxyfolate uh, dihydrofolate reductase now once the antibody is bound you need to detect the antibody how to detect the antibody so there is a bacterial protein so that is called the bacterial protein a bacterial protein a so this is a very it's a non specific protein that will bind to antibodies now this bacterial protein a is coated with the gold particles so it is coated with the gold particles okay now this is added to the antibodies now what will happen this protein binds and gold particles stays outside if the gold particles can easily be determined in an electron microscope so when you look through electron microscope you will see the membrane in the inner membrane and the outer membrane and also the gold particles if the protein is folded and unable to pass through to 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 our surprise what was found is especially in the yeast mitochondrial membrane this kind of roughly about 1000 such locations that means in the mitochondria there will be about a thousand places where in the inner mitochondrial membrane comes closer this is one side and the side where this ping pong complex is present and here it is through this if the protein will be transferred to in the mitochondrial matrix or to the inner membrane these complexes and they have calculated the distance and this has to be roughly about 20 nanometer should be the distance through such locations if the protein is translocated look at how simple simple experiments is helping us to understand the translocation of proteins to mitochondria now comes the next question what is the source of energy for transportation of or translocation of protein to mitochondria so therefore scientists carried out several experiments so one of the simplest experiment is they purified so therefore this is the purified protein that is supposed to get into mitochondria it is with the signal and to the purified protein they added respiring mitochondria is added so based on all that we have seen this protein must get inside either mitochondria now how to keep the protein in a folded or unfolded shape 
what is the energy source for that so we know from all our understanding it is generally in the ATP molecules so they did not add any ATP so minus ATP if no ATP is added what was observed no my no protein is transferred no transfer occurred no transfer occurred which means ATP molecules will keep in the HSP 70 it will keep in the HSP 70 in a non-functional way so therefore ATPs are required for keeping the protein in an unfolded form by using the HSP 70 then only the protein can be transferred inside this is one of the observation they made so they did also another experiment the next experiment was they took the purified protein okay then they denatured the protein we know from Anfinson's experiment that it can be denatured by adding urea so therefore it is the denatured protein so therefore it is not folded now to the denatured protein add mitochondria what do you expect so it is unfolded protein and if the protein was taken in the protein was taken in it is to prove that the protein must be in unfolded form and ATPs are required in order to keep the protein in unfolded form then only protein can get inside mitochondria there is a second source of energy for protein translocation to mitochondria that is the proton motive force we know that the proton motive force is generated because of a concentration gradient electrochemical gradient is generated like you know you are storing water across a dam so therefore there is a gradient created and this gradient is also useful for translocating proteins to mitochondria so therefore they tried several experiments by using uh, a cyanide and dnp etc these are chemicals that are used for dissipating in the proton motive force anything that dissipate the proton motive force will prevent either might be the protein from getting inside the mitochondria so therefore there are two sources of energy one is ATP molecule and the second one is a proton motive force they did a beautiful experiment what was done if you consider this is an outer membrane and this is in the inner mitochondrial membrane what was done is they allowed this is the tom complex they allowed a protein molecule to enter through the outer mitochondrial membrane once it is anchored what they did was they uh, altered in the inner mitochondrial membrane they separated and applied a voltage of about 200 millivolt is applied so by introducing 200 millivolt that is normally in the, in the, in the proton motive force experience in the inner mitochondrial membrane that is about 150 to 200 so they applied this volt and what was observed is the protein is allowed to move in a way it is a kind of an electrophoresis which is being carried out in the mitochondria you, you are doing an electrophoresis to drive a protein into the mitochondrial matrix look at uh, the simple thought pattern that is uh, or, or simple experiments that is helping us to understand how protein molecules are directed to mitochondria the last part of this video let us look at how the protein which is transferred into mitochondria is getting integrated in the within the structure for example in the outer mitochondrial membrane how a protein is getting integrated so there is a protein is known as SAM SAM stands for sorting and assembly uh, machinery of outer mitochondrial membrane 
so this protein will help a protein which is translocated if this is the protein which is translocated into the uh, pass through the outer mitochondrial membrane this protein will help to integrate uh, this protein into the mitochondrial membrane now sam is mostly focusing on uh, if the protein has got beta sheets so therefore if beta sheets are present so that will get incorporated into in the membrane with the help of a sam protein there is another protein named min 1 this is essential if the protein has got alpha helical structure especially if it has only a single alpha helical structure so therefore this protein helps in integrating into the outer mitochondrial membrane see how complicated uh, is the system that is working how it integrates etc at the moment we do not know maybe over a period of time we will have greater clarification on how exactly the integration is done but what we know for sure that there will be enough sequences within the structure that will help in the protein to be inserted in the membrane what about proteins meant for inner mitochondrial membrane so in the inner mitochondrial membrane if this is the inner mitochondrial membrane so there are certain proteins like uh, oxa 1 oxa protein number 1 so the oxa protein number 1 assume this is the oxa protein number 1 this protein will help a protein meant for inner mitochondrial membrane to be inserted inside other than oxa 1 there is another protein which is called mia 40 mia 40 is a protein that also helps in integrating um, protein to inner mitochondrial membrane we understand that mitochondria the inside the mitochondria has it has an oxidizing environment this mia 40 is specifically doing that function so it will convert it will oxidize the protein to such a level wherever there are cysteine residues it will form a disulfide linkage and that will ensure the protein is incorporated into the inner mitochondrial membrane so in this series of lecture what we have seen we looked at the structure of mitochondria we look at the function if the origin of mitochondria we also looked at what is the need for a signal to transport a protein to to mitochondria we looked at the nature of the signal we also looked at uh, uh, whether the protein should be folded or unfolded to be brought inside we also looked at what is the source of energy for taking in a protein to mitochondria so these were some of the experiments that were carried out by many scientists to give us the current knowledge about protein translocation to mitochondria